Did my latest mapping go just as I'd hoped? Pretty much, with a couple of twists. Ever since my activation in January of 2025, I've been on a mission to understand and either adapt to or fix the high pitches that I've been hearing. Since I'm bimodal, this was a particularly difficult problem to adapt to since what I heard on my left side through my cochlear implant and what I heard on my right side from the hearing aid were so different from each other. I was told I'd get used to it, but here's the thing. I didn't want to get used to it. I wanted to fix it, if at all possible. And that led me down the road of learning everything I could about my cochlear implant and how it works, consulting with experts and conducting experiments with an accommodating and super supportive audiologist. Last year, I chose Advanced Bionics a little bit for the general sense that their basic architecture was, well, advanced and a lot because of their robust integration with Phonak and the world of streaming devices. But what I didn't really know at the time is that AB's unique processing and coding scheme had hidden within it the means to help solve my high pitch issues. I just had to figure it out. And today I can happily say that this thing is more or less fixed. Voices sound correct. High frequency stuff like birds and speech sibilance sounds bright and natural. My speech scores are great. Social interactions are a breeze. And music, well, it still kind of sucks. But hey, it's getting better. What ended up being the solution that got me to this place of relative satisfaction, for now anyway, with my cochlear implant? In my last video, I explained how deactivating an electrode out in the high frequency part of the array, electrode 13 in my case, forced the stimulation of all of the frequencies beneath that electrode's center frequency just a little bit down toward the apex of my cochlea, so that I would perceive them as closer to their natural pitch. Nothing was getting stimulated at the part of my cochlea where electrode 13 sits, so high frequencies in that area were a bit of a jumbled mess. But then it was brought to my attention that advanced bionics electrodes could also be turned off and set to span mode. Doing this didn't shift any of the frequencies lower, but it did turn on something called current steering across the span, creating a virtual electrode stimulated by a combination of the active electrodes on either side of that gap. So the question that I left open in my last video and that I answer in this one is this. If I turn off one electrode so that the frequencies below it get shifted lower and set a next door neighbor electrode into span mode, will it shift those frequencies lower while creating a virtual electrode across that two electrode gap, stimulating my entire cochlea and smoothing out that jumbled musical mess? A clinical audiologist at Advanced Bionics, a cochlear implant engineer and researcher that I've been consulting with, and an advanced bionics research team member all said, more or less, keep us posted. There's a pretty good chance that it'll work. Well, it does work. Two weeks ago, I met with my audiologist. We tried out a few things, and I left with a map that accomplishes most of what I'd hoped for all along. This is the map that I walked in with that morning. Electrode 13 is turned off, and nothing is set to span mode. What did this sound like? Well, I'd brought my Bluetooth speaker and some test material preloaded on my phone. I listened to the speaker uh, right in front of my face, and with both my implant and my hearing aid active, one great piece of testing material that I've been using was the opening lines of the Beatles classic, Hey Jude. Now, I won't play it so that I don't get a copyright strike. Instead, I'll just tell you that the opening line is, Hey Jude, don't make it bad. Take a sad song, and make it better. There, now that I've got that earworm stuck in your head, imagine that Paul had taken a big hit of helium before he started to sing. That's what it sounded like in my left ear with all of my electrodes active. But with electrode 13 turned off, it sounded like my left and right ear both agreed that he was singing at fundamentally the same pitch. No more helium. It was a big improvement, and I lived with that setting for about a month. It was an improvement, however, it wasn't great. 
while the fundamental voice pitch was correct, it was still pretty distorted. Kind of like there were copies of Paul that were singing in the background with high-pitched non-harmonies. With time, I could kind of tune them out, but yeah, not ideal. So at my mapping a couple of weeks ago, after trying various combinations of electrode pairs, deactivated and spanned, we settled on this. Electrode 13 is deactivated, and electrode 14 is set to span mode. Electrodes 12 and 15 are apparently working together to create virtual electrodes across that gap so that my entire cochlea is getting stimulation. Notice that the center frequencies of the electrodes below 13 are the same as they were before setting electrode 14 to span mode, demonstrating that the downward shifting was the same either way. But 3.7 kHz was indicated as being above the gap, and now it shows it as being below the gap. In theory, it's actually being virtually stimulated somewhere in between electrodes 12 and 15 because of current steering, which means that there is no gap, which was the point of all of this. So how did that sound? Well, holding my Bluetooth speaker in front of my face as before and hitting the play button, Paul started singing the opening lines of Hey Jude, and it sounded like Paul singing the opening lines of Hey Jude, pretty much. My left and right ears worked together like they haven't for quite some time, and I broke into a big smile. So what's going on? Well, I think that the harmonic jumble, where the frequencies in that 3.5 to 5 kilohertz region were getting split across that gap at electrode 13, it's been smoothed out by current steering, I think. I don't really know. I just know that what I'm hearing is much closer to natural hearing than it was before. Is it perfect? No, but then again, I didn't expect it to be. There's still some of those high overtones that I don't think should be there, but now they're less grating, less invasive. Some of what's going on is probably that I've been wearing this thing for 16 hours a day for seven months, and my brain is coming to accept it. I noticed that when I got home, pure tones from a tone generator are still mismatched between ears with the implant still reading higher in pitch than what my other ear is hearing. I didn't really expect that since voices sound so much more accurate. What can I say? Hearing is complicated. The other thing I didn't expect and don't really understand is this. As I said, I have electrode 13 disabled and electrode 14 set to span, but I also tested 14 disabled and 13 set to span. In both cases, it seems to me, that electrodes 12 and 15 should be generating the same virtual electrodes, regardless of which of the two disabled electrodes are set to span, but that's not what happened. I can't quite put my finger on it, but disabling 13 and spanning 14 just sounded a bit smoother and more natural than the other way around. It definitely makes a difference in how it sounds, even though logically they should sound the same to me. Comparing the screenshots of the two maps does show that 3.7 kilohertz is displayed on opposite sides of that gap. So I guess that how frequencies are reallocated is somehow different when the neighboring electrode is set to span or not. I mean, it's almost as if this stuff is actually more complicated than it seems. And maybe, just maybe, my liberal arts degree and modest intellect have limited my ability to fully grasp this stuff. I mean, I suppose that's possible. Looking ahead, there are more things to try. For instance, trying to disable and span two different sets of electrodes. Maybe that will get the pitch of the pure tones from a tone generator closer to my other ear. But the thing is, I'm not really in that big of a hurry to find out anymore. What I have now is working pretty well. I think I'll just enjoy where I'm at for a while. My next mapping is early winter, and by then, I'm sure I'll be itching to push things just a little bit further. The funny thing I've noticed is that what I used to call my good ear is now definitely my bad ear. It just doesn't sound good anymore, even with the hearing aid. So now I'm wondering if what I'm missing, what I naturally crave, is the balance of hearing roughly the same thing from both sides. Might I actually be better off with two of these things? For the first time, I'm starting to wonder. Until next time, I wish you all well on your own path to better hearing and Thanks for watching.